Hey. So even at the $20 price, that's a great deal, but we got them for 10. So uh, you can pay whenever, but if you want to pick one of those up. I also have uh, three calendars left. Chalk drawings by Peter Ruckman, uh, 2019 calendar, so you still got 10 months left on that. Those are free. Take one if you will use it. I always ask people, don't take it and throw it in your car. But uh, we're adding a couple more books to the library, and this is one that I highly recommend, The Sure Word of Prophecy. Amen. And then we also have Ruckman's Apocalypse, which is a collection of his drawings regarding the book of Revelation Amen. with the scriptures and explanation of what you're looking at. And you ought to check that out. Uh, we'll, we'll be putting it in the library, but I'm going to set them up front. And... Uh, we, we've had, uh, we, years ago, I gave several of those out. They sell, they sell uh, copies that are slightly damaged, and they sell them real cheap. So we gave a few of those away. But <clears throat> if you haven't seen that, I should have put this one there, too. Huh? Oh, I thought you said my name. <laughs> that, that was fast. Go on. Whoa. Tracy, come on down. <laughs> now, now, she ain't going to read that for at least one week. Best oh, no, no, no. Take it. I'll put it back. No, no, no. Because you're true. That's so true. But you might not get it back. You might not get it back. But I was just going to, I didn't Aww. say that to put you under conviction. <laughs> I said that because we want to pray for Tracy the next week because she takes a big old test. So she can become a licensed real estate agent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why I mentioned that. Not to make no, 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 no. <laughs> And I want to add that on here. But there are other plans out there, but we just mix this. Yes, I see that hand. Not too many people have my eyes as bad as I do. And the pastor up there explained that you can take your... You can take your uh, your smartphone. You can do all kinds of stuff and go through the. Uh, uh, well, that audio CD I just talked about. Yeah, the audio CD, etc. So there's no excuse. Yep. Excusitis is are gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Start with our uh, current events update. Uh. <laughs> Stephen mentioned how pathetic both political parties are this morning, and the Republican Party is not much better than. Uh, yeah. And uh, when Paul Ryan started in Congress in 1999, his net worth was 382,865, which isn't bad. How many of you can say that? Now, he's worth 7.8 million. Wow. Ask yourself how a Congress can can make 76,000 a year and become a multi-multi-millionaire. Now this is true about most of them. Yeah. It's, it, I'm not just gonna pick on Paul Ryan, I'm gonna tell you, if you research your politicians, they're crooks. Yeah, amen. Uh, one of the things, if you, you wanna read real, a real, uh, you wanna get really angry, pick up uh, William Grady's book, How Satan Turned America Against God. Yeah. And read in there about the 9/11 thing, and how yeah. the Bushes, and the and Rumsfeld and Cheney and those guys benefited from 9/11, made millions upon millions of dollars through the Carlisle Group. It'd make you sick. It's a 95 percent increase. Yeah, his net worth went up 95 percent in math. Congress. You know, most now realize that. Congress has exempted some from trading policies. Yeah. Laws. Congress laws passes laws for you and me and exempt themselves. And that's how they get by with being crooks. Now, here's the thing that ought to make you disgusted is that these same people will tell you that the problem is entitlements. The problem is Social Security and Medicare. You're the problem. That's not the problem. Um, I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not even in support of Social Security, to be honest with you. But I'll tell you this: uh, 
the problem isn't Social Security. The problem is the crooks who have emptied Social Security. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the people who paid into that should get their money back. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah, Johnny. So they're saying Social Security and Medicare are the problem. So I guess, but we know they're not smart enough to say, okay, let's just go back to single payer then, or let's go back to, let's just take the government out of it and now you can take care of your own Social Security. Yeah, because single payer is the opposite. Single payer is when the government controls everything. Okay, what is it then? Um, what is it called when, when we yeah. used to have? Yeah, just. Uh, no, non-governmental. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We agree with you. So let's just go back to that. Yeah. Let's go back to each we person takes care of their own. It would take a long time to explain it all to you, but this is to give you the heads up that if you do your homework, you'll find out. I also want to mention this thing I talked about Wednesday. I said from the very start that this guy's a liar. He is. And uh, new evidence suggests that... Jesse or Juicy? I keep hearing both. I don't know which. Yes. Jesse? Juicy? 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 Yeah. It's yeah. probably Jesse. Smallman. One thing I know is not Jesse because he corrected somebody who called him Jesse. So I know, that, but it's one or the other. Smollett orchestrated the attack that uh, for weeks your fake news media. ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, Time, Newsweek, all of it. Bunch of scripted Democrat operatives have been trying to paint this attack up as Trump country. Trump country. Has the, it's the reason why he was attacked. They even uh, claimed that these guys were white and they had MAGA hats on and they yelled after they beat him up, this is MAGA country. It's all a big load of hogwash. Amen. Uh, when this happened, the Democrats were calling um, this a lynching to try to paint it up like it's a racist thing. The NAACP blatantly called it against Trump and his followers. It's hogwash. He hired two Nigerian weightlifters and paid them $3,500 each to orchestrate this attack. It's a big fat lie. There will not be retractions. And all the stuff that was said, you remember just like with the kids with the hats on at DC, what was the name of that school? Covington, the Covington kids. Hardly anybody had the guts to apologize. Yeah. And when they did, it was always like in the a, a, a shady little area of their news magazine or on a part of their website that hardly anybody saw. That sort of thing. This is what Variety Magazine was defending him right up to the very last, saying those reports that he staged the attack are unconfirmed. And instead of replacing that last night with a story saying we were wrong, we falsely reported this to you, instead, article not found. Oh, they just retracted it. That's how you deal with it. <laughs> wow. Now, at some point, I'm sure Variety will even put up a, some kind of an article about this, but they'll act like their hands are clean. They will not. Yes. Ellie, do their homework. Amen. And before I move on to that, I just want you to understand the importance of this. Christians try to paint you as though you are a bunch of haters. And that's what I tell people. You ain't got, it, 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 there's people calling themselves Christians that have got the sense that God gave a dog's tail. That they don't hate Donald Trump, they hate you. If you want to find the people who are not hurting this country, you look for Trump supporters. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. The people who are opposed to Trump are the wicked people in this country. Amen. Just look at it. They're the people, for example, who will uh, vote for pro-choice, pro-Sodom people to get elected. They are the people who are filling up our prisons, they're the people overdosing, they're the people who are pushing drugs. So what do they got to do? That's, they've done this to Christians from the very beginning, is they make it look like you are the trouble, you are the problem. And you know who their best friend is? Your apostate, brainless, professing Christian friends and family. Yeah, amen. They are the useful idiots of Satan's agenda in America. 
They will use your family and your friends against you. You watch it. Yeah, amen. That's why I'm showing you this stuff. It's going to get bad. It's going to get worse. Sure. Now, <laughs> before uh, moving on, I want this current events update. And Brother Mark's not here. I was going to ask him to give a word on it, but I don't know what, what something's come up with this truck. Hopefully not, but... Last Sunday, uh, we went, Brother Doug, Jenny, and Mark and I went and talked to Mark's dad. His name's Marvin. He was 95, right? Yeah, he was 95. And... In hospice at uh, Wesley Glen. And uh, we uh, shared the gospel, and he made a profession of faith. He confessed his faith in the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. for the forgiveness of sins. That was Sunday. And then he went to be with the Lord Wednesday. Wow. wow. Now, I want to tell you something. People have, people, some people have a problem with the, what they call deathbed conversions. I want to tell you, uh, if, there's, if there's a level of decibels, or what you always you explain to me, when it, the noise level of, uh, of sound, I always say decibels, mm -hmm. but whatever the register is, the, the needle for who's the loudest in heaven will be men like that, no, women, no, men no, and no. women like that. No. You imagine... You know, and praise God for Amen. folks like you know, Johnny and Jenny, you know, what how old were you were saved? Amen. Like five or so. Yeah. yeah, five. Yeah. So if they live to be his age, well I was saved for ninety years. <laughs> but, you know, and can have a lot of reward. They can stay faithful. And then someone like me, I was saved uh, nineteen years old. So if I were to live to his age, I got one and I'm not saying we're not gonna be singing his praises and thankful. But man, you talk about somebody says, well, what's your story? Well, I was saved on a Sunday and then died three days later. And here I am. Wow. Amen. 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 Those of you. Amen. Now, here's the thing I have to have to say before we get into our study is don't bank on it. Amen. <laughs> don't bank on having that opportunity on a deathbed. Amen. People killed in a car accident. People have been yeah. Dropped dead from heart attacks. Uh, we have a neighbor in the hospital who almost died, and he's unsaved and about, what, 91? He's, he's at least 95. 90, he's, he's about the same 90s. age as Marvin had a brain bleed. And uh, the Lord spared him. But as people just drop dead like that, don't, don't bank on having a uh, deathbed opportunity. But if there, if, as long as you have breath, we will preach the gospel to you. Amen. And the Bible says, Amen. if you will believe, repenting toward God with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on His death, burial, and resurrection, trusting in His blood as payment for your sins, you'll go to heaven, according to the Bible. You guys remember the story of the thief on the cross? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's an example. All right, so let's get into our Bible study. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, if you haven't already turned there, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We thank you for everyone here. We thank you for the remnant of people who are standing up and unafraid and having courage to speak out and to uh, preach the gospel no matter, no matter the repercussions. And Lord, we want to do it all for your glory and in your name. And we ask you to help us as we study this. We consider these things in Colossians 3.17. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, that's the title of our message. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're going to be in verse 17. We're going to run around the Bible a few times, so be ready to let your fingers do the walking or uh, click the right button or whatever you're using for a Bible. <laughs> if you're there, I didn't. He, he looks. Jenny wants to make sure the mic's on, Sean. Well, here, let's do the test. It's on. Thank, Thank you. you. Speaker for streams on, too. All right, is everybody there? Yep. Everyone read with me, Colossians 3.17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen? Amen. It's a great memory verse. Amen. And having established in our previous studies the need to put off certain things and put on 
the new man with his particular characteristics, uh, we then see that what we do in word or deed, we should do in whose name? Jesus. That's right. Not in your name, not in your pastor's name, not even in your church's name. Amen. Amen? Amen. This should be the theme of our lives. As the sand through the hourglass, so is the theme of our lives. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Sammy says, if I had thumbs, I would do things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. See, Sammy doesn't have thumbs. Sammy's so spiritual. You don't have that excuse. You have thumbs, amen? amen. <laughs> Odie says, if I had thumbs, I would clean out the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> what about Cammie? Uh, those are cute puppies. Cammie? But you're not a puppy. And uh, you have thumbs. You have a spirit and a soul. You don't have any excuse, amen? Amen. I don't have any excuse. I need to be busy about the Lord's work. And I need, need to be doing those things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, let's clarify that this is when the new man is doing the word or deed. Don't drive like you're devil possessed, flipping the bird in Jesus' name. See? There are certain things you should not do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right. I respect those who have not put bumper stickers on their car because they drive like idiots. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. if you drive like an idiot, own up to it and don't put a Jesus sticker on your car and be a bad advertisement. Amen? Right. Amen. I respect that. Yep. Now, you shouldn't be satisfied with that. You ought to be trying to change your driving habits. Amen. Um, but uh, I, I'll grant this, that it, you know, driving safely can get you killed, too. Um, a girl last week was just driving a minor own business out on I-71 and some wild, crazy maniac smacked into her and she ran into a truck and she's dead. She didn't do anything wrong. Uh, our local, our uh, highway state patrol, as I was telling Jenny this morning, they're derelict in duty. I'm going to be writing letters. I'm just, I don't know what else, you, you know, you, you, as a citizen, that's all you can do. Yep. 315 has posted 55 mile per hour. If you go within four miles of that, you go, you can be going 59 mile an hour and people pass you like you're right. sitting oh, still. I know. I know. For two years, I've only seen one highway patrolman on 315. I know. Those of us who obey the law are left to die. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what I do, I'm not going to start breaking the law with all the lawless. Uh, and if I did, I'd have to take my bumper stickers off. <laughs> and you know what? These idiots pass me like, what are you doing driving the speed limit? <laughs> yeah. Well, they can just read my bumper stickers and go to hell. <laughs> Amen. Because that's their attitude. Eat Christian. <laughs> well, just burn then. I did my part. I obeyed the law and did it in the name of Jesus and got the gospel on there. You don't like that? You want to go to hell? Then go to hell. Amen? Amen. Yeah. That's the truth. That's where we're living. Here's some bad examples. You don't want to do this. Deuteronomy 18.20, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name. See that? Mm -hmm. TBN. All kinds of liars and crooks on Great. Christian TV. Amen. Speaking in Jesus' Amen. name. Yeah. Bunch of liars and crooks. Yep. Amen. Amen. If we were under the Old Testament, we could kill them. Right. Amen. Under the Mosaic Law, they'd take those TBN false prophets out and stone them to death. Yeah, those TBN false prophets, I'd thank God every day they're in the dispensation of the gospel Amen. of grace. Because I'd line up to stone them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'd be right there. Those crooks have sent people. They've done more to, to grease the, the, right. the skids to hell for people with the yeah. way they crook and lie, tell everybody, oh, if you just believe in Jesus' name, you can have anything. Send your seed faith offering to me. Oh, and a sucker send it in. But the Bible says, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. They preach in another God, of course. 
But even those who preach in Jesus' name, right. who are false prophets, they deserve death. Right. And they get it if they lived under Mosaic law. So that's why I'm not killing anybody. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm not going to kill anybody. But I know they deserve death. Yeah. And the suckers pay for their big cars and their... Their jets and and locally they may not have a jet, but they're all driving caddies or whatever they want, you know, living high on the on the hall. And you know what? All you have to do is preach the truth about those suckers, and the suckers will attack you. Yeah. I put out two or three videos about these suckers, and they come after me. Mm -hmm. You're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. No, you're stupid. <laughs> I'm not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you the truth about a crook Amen. and a liar. Right. Blaspheming the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know what? There's going to be some blasting by the Holy Ghost when those men right. and women are judged. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the blasting of the Holy Ghost is going to be. Here's another one. Jesus speaking. He said, take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name. We're not talking about the Muslims. We're not talking about the Buddhists. We're not talking about the atheists, the agnostics. Or We're talking about Christian TV and Christian radio and Christian churches. Mm -hmm. right. It says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not after them. You'll hear it all the time. He's uh, fruitcake charismatics you're running around saying you are a little Christ not that you have Christ in you but you are a Christ and of course the whole new age things crept into the emergent church and everything and they teach you are a Christ Christ consciousness you ever heard that yeah that's not Bible that's satanic it's not Christ consciousness outside of this book amen Everything Jesus wants you to know is in this book. Amen. Contacting spirits and all that kind of thing or extra biblical prophecies and all that is from the devil. Amen. 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 Perverted minds have done horrible things in the name of our Lord Jesus. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, some of the worst people who ever lived did it in the name of Jesus. All the uh, Roman Catholic pedophile priests did it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, evangelical, especially in the youth ministry, doing things to little boys and girls in the name of Jesus. There's even people in Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts who claim to be Christian going in there and molesting little boys and girls. We had one here in Westerville right after I talked to you Wednesday, Johnny. I looked at the news the next day. They had one in Westerville. Boy Scouts busted, publicly masturbating. Oh, wow. He's a scout master. Wow. Yeah, well, whenever you invite the sodomites in, I mean, it's just going to get worse. Amen? Yep. And now they're inviting the girls in. Well, they're, they're inviting the girls into the Boy Scouts. They're inviting the lesbians into the Girl Scouts. They're inviting the homo men into the Boy Scouts. They can all go camping with all those little boys. But I can't be a Girl Scout. You could probably if you claim self-identified <laughs> as a girl. <laughs> but here's some more examples. The Inquisition. Millions were murdered by the Roman Catholic Church in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. They would tie them to a stake and in the name of Jesus set them on fire. Yeah. Adulterers. I've had this at least twice in my ministry. Oh, what just? Oh, I went the wrong way. These adulterers claim that the Lord led them to divorce without biblical grounds and marry someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and in one case, a fellow said he, the, he believed the Lord would have him divorce his wife even though there's no biblical grounds. He wasn't wanting to marry anybody else, but he wanted to know if it's okay with me. And I said, no, it's not okay with me because it's not okay with the Word of God. Now, I said without biblical grounds. If someone's got biblical grounds, you're free to divorce. Mm -hmm. Some evangelicals have turned marriage into a, a cult and turned uh, their wives and husbands into gods. And they worship them instead of the Lord. That, no, man. If you're married to somebody who is an adulterer, you married someone who is beating you or abandons you, 1 Corinthians 7, you're free to divorce. Amen. And I'll support you 100%. But if you just uh, like the new model that just walked in, you know, and 
uh, you're going to trade your old model in for a new one, that kind of thing. Or you just think she's a nag and you're just sick of hearing it, so you're going to divorce her, you'd rather live alone. I'm not going to support that. Amen. There's got to be biblical grounds. But these people actually say the Lord is leading them to divorce without even biblical grounds. Yeah. And they'll tell people they're blaming the Lord. That's doing it in the name of the Lord. Another one are what I call filthy stars. Mm. Yep. After R-rated performances, they get a, an award and want to thank God or thank our Lord Jesus Christ. And they just done something that was, what is it, Grammys and yeah. you know all that, Oscars. Oscars and all that. A bunch of filthy music, mm -hmm. a bunch of filthy uh, whatever, movies or whatever. And then they'll get up and thank God or thank Jesus. That's just, it's, I, I, my first memory of that happened was Prince. His real name's Rogers Nelson. And uh, he was basically a porn singer. And he would use his guitar to uh, simulate masturbation. And he would uh, simulate sex with his backup up singers on stage while singing his filthy music. And then he'd get an award and thank the Lord for it. <laughs> then, uh, what was the other one? Hammer Time. MC Hammer, you know, and he had a couple of songs that were, I think, kind of, I don't remember the lyrics exactly, but I think they were kind of harmless, but then his album was filled with filthiness, and ironically, one of his songs was, you've got to pray, you've got to pray just to make it today, you know, that kind of thing, that was written by Prince, Prince wrote that, and then MC Hammer Hank, uh, sang that, and then sang, uh, I'm not even going to tell you a couple of the lyrics. Just the titles of the songs are offensive. They're so sexually explicit rap. on MC Hammer. Rap is bad. Huh? Rap is bad. Well, yeah, and, and that was, but it's, you know, uh, it's country and pop and all of it. I mean, it's fornication, sleeping with people you're not married to and, you know, all that. But MC Hammer got up, you know, and made a big deal about the board when he got an award for that. I was kind of glad to see his career end. Amen. Amen. But then somebody Amen. else like Lady Gaga. Cardi B. And R. Kelly, the rape, any of the rapists. They got him on video with a little girl. But it's not always that extreme. And there are other bad acts taking place right now among Christians and, and it's being done in Jesus' name. If, if you publish corrupt Bible versions... In Jesus' name, that's wicked. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean just the publisher. I mean, you know, these ministries who give them out to people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bookstores are selling them. <laughs> preaching false doctrine. Yeah. Amen. People are preaching false doctrine in the name of Jesus. People say, well, how do you know or whatever you're, you're preaching? <laughs> well, I do a pretty uh, serious study. Um, uh, I believe that the Bible is dispensational and most false doctrine is because people reject dispensations wow. or they go hyper in dispensations. I think as long as you stay biblically dispensational, then you're, you're pretty, pretty well off as far as avoiding preaching false doctrine. Um, there are preachers out there who call themselves fundamental King James Baptist and they preach against dispensations. They, they preach against the preacher of rapture. They yeah. preach against Israel. And they hate the Jews. They deny the Holocaust and all that. I'm pretty sure they're wrong. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you create heretical or worldly music, Amen. And that describes most of the Christian music being made today in Jesus' name. It's, it's heretical. A lot of the lyrics are heretical. Just If you pay attention to the lyrics, you'll find out that the problem in Christian music has always been that Christian musicians think they're different than everybody else and they don't have to study their Bible and they don't have to learn doctrine and they skip out on church. I, they don't even talk to me about it. For 30 years, I've watched it. Yeah. And uh, we don't have that problem here because we don't really have a music ministry. We have Christians who sing, amen? Amen. amen. And if you don't sit there and, and take part in the Bible studies and you're not regular in attendance, you're not going to get up and sing and show off. Amen. Amen. A lot of these churches, the people who get, and, and they're not really ministering to anybody. They're showing off. Mm -hmm. They want to show off their talent and show up. They can hit that high note. And everybody's like, oh. That's what happens in sunny churches all the time. 
I had a, uh, I, I've tried to, I've jokingly said it, but I, I'm only half joking. Really, I mean, you guys are going to get up and sing. I don't care if you don't sound good as far as the worldly standard. But I, I don't also don't like when people get up and say, well, I didn't really have any time to practice, but uh, so this will probably sound terrible. That's, that's wrong too. You should give the Lord, you know, some effort. But we had a fella who get up the church I pastored down in Cincinnati before I got defrocked by the free wills. Um, and uh, Ernie would get up and uh, play the harmonica. He wasn't even real good at it. <laughs> but he loved the Lord. And he would play that harmonica. He practiced too. He didn't just show up with a harmonica one day and start blowing on it. And, but he, he just wasn't, he wasn't, oh, what's the guy's name? Buddy Green or right. uh, who's the other? Buddy person? Green. Yeah. And he wasn't that good, but he'd get up there and just, and sometimes it'd take you a minute to even realize what he was playing. <laughs> but he loved the Lord. And you should just see his face. Not a face of pride or anything, just a face of loving the opportunity to serve the Lord and to play that harmonica. And uh, one time he forgot his harmonica. And I said, I didn't know it. And I said, all right, the person who was going to sing for us didn't show up. They got sick, couldn't show up. You got anything for us? He says, oh, I, for I didn't know and I didn't bring my harmonica. I, I said, oh, okay. He said, but I can whistle. I said, well, come on down. And he got up there and just started whistling. <laughs> <laughs> and he went through all four verses. <laughs> You're about that, that, that age, I think, when, when that happened, by the way. But, That's talent, though. That's like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, do it, like, he did it better than you, though. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. I'll spare you all four verses, but it's not Well, I knew a blind guy who whistled and his wife played, played the organ for him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'd rather hear that than some heretical right. nonsense or someone up there just trying to show off. Amen? Oh, I've Amen. seen pianists just make their hands just fly. Oh, yeah, flying and all I, over it. Yeah, over and it. I just, I'm like... No, 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 no. Not me. Yeah. You know. That's when they're saying glory to me instead of glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, uh, people are doing that in the name of Jesus, and it's not going to reward. There's no reward in that. There's also no reward in false unity with apostates. Mm -hmm. Everybody today wants to sound real spiritual and say, oh, we should just get along with everybody, and I believe we should have this. We had this uh, thing one time, a march for Jesus, they called it. And they wanted uh, our church to be a part of that. And uh, they gave me a website. And I went there and I went to the, they listed the churches and had links to their websites. Mm -hmm. And so I went and looked. I mean, you had churches that were uh, openly pro-sodomite and other ones that were openly pro-abortion and all this stuff. And they wanted uh, March for Jesus. What Jesus are you marching for? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what one, the one that's a figment of their imagination. Right. And you, you march with apostates. That's called the ecumenical movement, the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, and all mm -hmm. that. You can do that in Jesus' name all you want, but it's not good. Amen. He's not getting any glory out of that. And also, the last one I'll mention is accommodating sin of loved ones. Mm -hmm. Today, people say they'll blame Jesus and say, I just believe it's out of love that I should put up with my... Uh, son or my daughter who are, who's living in sin and and doing and I can list it's not just uh, sex there's all kinds of sins that they, they're involved in and they accommodate they don't they don't confront them they don't draw a line and say you know what you're welcome here but you're not bringing that in amen 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 if you love your son or your daughter you'll draw that line amen and you do that in the name of Jesus and let that sin come in your home and you accommodate it. And churches are doing it too. Yep. A lot of what churches will do is let uh, the, the people who are in unrepentant sin come in and they'll just never say anything about it. Nope. I'll guarantee you on Judgment Day, you're going to find out there are people who come into the church and sit down in the building and the preacher will not say something that he would have said if they weren't sitting there. 
That's not, that's just bad, wicked. In other words, do not do those things in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so now that we're clear on the context, <laughs> context, context, context. I should scare somebody and say, now that was my introduction. <laughs> it wasn't, but uh, we'll go back to this verse real quick. And whatsoever you do in order to be, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, but you better keep that in context. It's talking about all you do as you put on the new man. Previous verses. All you do as you put on the new man and you let that new man control and not the old man. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So the question is then being answered here, who gets the praise? That's the, that's the question being answered. Who gets the praise? Here's a little reality check. When we do things with the right heart, we want Jesus to be praised. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with taking a compliment. There's nothing wrong with, somebody comes up and just wants to be encouraging to you. Don't get so super spiritual that you make it awkward. Amen? I mean, someone set, comes up and says, you know, uh, Stephen has a good, good lesson, good lesson. And you just say, well, thanks. Now, if they come up and they say, you know, oh, Stephen, you're the greatest ever. There's never been a better teacher. And start la <laughs> you lapping it on like that. You better watch out because usually that's the person that praises your mouth. They reach down and you think they're bowing down to you instead of pulling the carpet out from underneath your feet. Flattery is different. There's a difference between encouragement and flattery. Amen. Some of the most praising people in my life, people who came up and really poured it on, turned out to be the biggest jerks. <laughs> watch out for that. But people come up and they, or they'll, they'll email me or whatever and talk about a message they really liked or whatever. And I'll respond. I'll say, thank you. Praise the Lord. It's a great book. Because that's really what it's about. If you just say it's a great message because I was able to entertain you, uh, you know, whatever, then it wasn't a great message. Amen. But if it's a great message because you got something from God's Word. Amen. And that's another thing. Some people don't understand. They think that it's only a great Bible study or a great message if, you know, uh, you got excited. Or, you know, all that emotions. Ooh. You know, people are controlled by their feelings to get mm -hmm. yeah. They are. And that's what the whole charismania thing is. Ooh, I felt that. Yeah, and so it isn't even substance as long as I can get your emotions going. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Yeah. Johnny? I just say, is it? What, what I seem to have noticed is the whole thing with the emotions, that seems to be just life in general, that fighting the flesh is doing things even when you don't feel like it, Amen. even when your feelings are telling you something different. I mean, every Sunday I do something that I do not feel like doing. Get up. Getting out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> 7.30. Yep. Yeah. My alarm goes off. And I roll out of bed. And I start walking toward the family room. And then I see what looks like an angel. <laughs> and she's looking. No. This angel has coffee. <laughs> <laughs> And I take the nectar of heaven. Whoa. And I walk over to a lazy boy. <laughs> and when I sit down, if it weren't for that coffee, I probably would never get up again. <laughs> because I'm lazy. Yeah. Yes. But it's like Popeye eating a spinach. I drink down the coffee, I'm like, bang, bang, yeah. <laughs> to the shower. <laughs> and then the shower, man. If you all don't shower before you come to church, I'm not pointing at anybody, but I can tell no, you. If you don't shower before you come to church, you're messing up. That's not the way to do it. Get in that shower. Man, it will make you feel like a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And then, then you're ready to go. But, you know, there are probably people not here today because they just didn't feel like getting up. Controlled by their feelings. <laughs> 
There'll be people who, you know, won't do a lot of things that they ought to do for the Lord because the feelings control them. Mm -hmm. But it also can be a helpful motivation not only to not be controlled by your feelings, but want the opportunity to do something that can bring glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That ought to be, as I said, it ought to be the theme of your life. You want to do things. But sadly, most people want to do things so they can get recognition. So they can be glorified. And I've told you, you know, I, I, I've been to churches where you, you walk in and we've got, you know, scripture signs and all that kind of thing. But you walk into some churches and there's the pastor's face, <laughs> you know, Thank and the pastor's nice. name or everything. Yeah. And they, they, and once the pastor gets a certain amount of following and everything, and then it becomes, you know, Greg Miller Ministries International. And, you know, Gregory, Pastor Gregory Miller dot com. <laughs> you can buy this mug for a gift of four hundred dollars. We'll send you this mug with Greg's face on it. Oh, hey, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Did you say to chase off the mice? Is that what you want to do? <laughs> he says he wants one. Yeah. <laughs> Turn over to Ephesians 1. Take two. Poor Dad. <laughs> Ephesians 1. You call somebody in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Verses 12 through 14, we studied many, many moons ago. By the way, uh, the 19th, when is that? Two days from now, they're going to have that super moon, just as FYI. Oh, yeah. See the handiwork of God. Check yes. out that super moon if there's clear sky, Tuesday night. But Ephesians chapter 1, beginning verse 12, uh, uh, I'm going to start ahead of that while you're turning there, but uh, we read in verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. One big happy family. Amen? Amen. And whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Begin reading verse 12 with me. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Now, look at that. He started out 2,000 years ago talking about those who first trusted in Christ being to the praise of whose glory? His glory. Then he talks about those in verse 13 who also trusted the gospel that was preached beginning with those who first believed. And that we have been given the down payment of the Holy Spirit, the earnest, the down payment, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. That's you. You're the purchased possession. You have been bought with a price, with the blood of Jesus Christ. And you are already, I, I, one preacher one time, uh, I heard preach that we're on layaway right now. <laughs> And I don't really agree with that analogy, but in a way, it's true. It's like you we're on layaway, and there's coming a day. Now, how many of you know what layaway is? Mm -hmm. I, I learned about layaway when I had a little uh, Mariah and her sisters, and, and, and I wanted to buy a bunch of stuff but didn't have a bunch of money. So I would go in like October, and I'd put stuff in layaway, and then I'd make payments every two weeks when I got paid. And then there was that big day when I got to go and get all that stuff that I was going to give to them on Christmas. It was a big deal to me in my early 20s to be able to pay that off and, and be able to take that stuff home and give those kids. Well, that's just a tiny little glimpse of the kind of thing that we're involved in where you're on layaway. <laughs> and there's coming a day when you'll be finally, the purchase will be complete and you'll be redeemed. And it will be to His glory Amen. because you didn't do a thing to deserve it. Amen. You didn't do a thing to help it. Yeah. It was all about all about him. That's why Jesus alone deserves all of our praise. That's why in our music, our hymns, our praise, we won't allow songs in that 
praise anyone other than Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's the only one who will ever, forever deserve the praise. You were born again in order to work. Amen. Oh, I don't do work. I'm just going to sit here and eat my popcorn and watch movies. I like to play video games. I want to go golfing. I like to be out on the water. I like to go fishing. I like to be up in a tree looking for a deer to kill. <laughs> on and on it goes. Is there anything wrong with any of those things? Not in and of themselves. But there are people who consume so much of their time with those things that they don't have any time to bring glory to the Lord. Oh, but I beat the high score. Praise the Lord. No, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> but look at that 10-pointer I got there. Well, <laughs> praise the Lord if you eat it. <laughs> Provided you some meat. We're supposed to work for the glory of God. That's why you're left here. Uh, we're, we're in Ephesians 1. Turn over to Ephesians 2. If you didn't close your Bible. Ephesians chapter 2. Beginning in verse 8, very familiar territory, but a lot of times they cut off verse 10 and kind of lose some of the message, some of the bite. Beginning in verse 8, read that with me. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God's got work ready for you to do. Amen. Will you do it? A lot, of, a lot of people today, I mean, we're so starstruck. And everybody's a superstar. Even people who haven't done anything but take pictures of their butt and put it on the internet. And they're superstars because they got a big butt. Or they got big boobs. And they take pictures barely covering their boobs. And they put them out on the internet. And that's supposed to be a star today. That's your culture. Don't get mad at me for telling you what your culture is. <laughs> that's what your culture is. Our superstars are talentless boobs and butts. Right. Yeah, and photoshopped at that. <laughs> it's just amazing. And instead of uh, worshiping the stars and being caught up with all the stars, well, a lot of people want to be superstars themselves. So you got Instagram and Facebook, and they're putting their own boobs and butts up there. Yeah, I'm talking about professing Christians here. Wow. I'm, I told Jenny about a young lady who. Uh, tragically died this week and in their in the obituary talked about how she loved the Lord and all this. Go to her Facebook page and it looked like Kim Kardashian. Professing Christian, loved the Lord, showing the whole world her boobs and her butt. Amen. That's the reality we're living with. Amen. Instead of getting glory for herself, she could have lived her life doing things that would bring glory to the for the, to the Lord, amen? amen? That might even include helping to clean the church. Amen. That might include helping with the babies in the church. Amen. That might include putting salt out. Amen. That might include flushing a toilet when you see someone else didn't. Amen. He said, well, that's not going to bring glory to the Lord. I think he's pleased. Amen. I think he cares about the little things. Mm -hmm. Amen. See somebody who needs something. Um, oh, by the way, that reminds me, we've got a humidifier. It's almost, uh, season's almost over, but uh, we've got a humidifier if anybody needs it. If you know somebody needs something, bring it in. We'll ask okay. if anybody needs it, and if no one here needs it, we'll try to find somebody who does. Thank you. Amen. Do it in the name of the Lord, not in your own name. There's been men who have driven around we have 270, but most big cities have something like that. Uh, Cincinnati has 275. Outer, outer. Huh? The outer belt. Yeah, the outer belt. Men who have got their cars week after week, they're not preachers, they don't have their names in lights, and they've driven around and they watch to see someone broken down. Some of them even have the radios and things so they know when someone breaks down. And they go and they offer help. 
They offer to help them change a tire, give them fix a flat for a tire to get them to the <clears throat> gas station, help them if they ran out of gas, whatever they, and present the gospel. Amen. They did those things in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some of you, I don't care if you can be a plumber, you can be an electrician, you can be a, uh, you can be someone who can help an elderly person with uh, cleaning their home. You can do any number of things. It ain't going to make you famous. <laughs> You're not going to get your name in lights. But you can do it in the name of the Lord and he'll get the glory. And people, I've heard people tell the stories. Tell stories about this so-and-so. I didn't know who they were. Did this for me. And they just told me they just wanted to do it because Jesus wanted them to do it. Amen. 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 <laughs> I don't know who it was, but when I was alone with my daughters and flat broke, but wanted to take them out. And somebody saw me alone with my girls and paid the bill and left me a gospel church. <laughs> Amen. I'll say, but I was very thankful. <clears throat> That's doing it. Not everybody's got that kind of money, but man, if you see some somebody struggle and take care of their kids or something like that, and you can pay their their little McDonald's bill or or Chick Fil A or wherever you're at, and leave them and tip. I just ask you to give them this, and they go up to you know pay the bill. And I was standing there. I I put in the order. And uh, I stand there waiting, and she said, okay, we'll get your order down here. And I thought, ooh, did I have a blackout? I don't remember paying. I, you know, I, I didn't pay yet. Oh, it's taken care of. Wow. You mean I? No, no, somebody, okay. I walk over there, and they bring the food, and on the food, oh, and they ask me to give you this. <laughs> I mean, you talk about mind blow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanking the Lord. Amen. So you do that. And don't leave them a picture of yourself, you know. <laughs> it's for the glory of God, amen? amen? It's also not so you'll benefit. It's not for you to personally benefit. Things you do for the Lord in the material world, you'll get nothing out of it. Amen. The blessing comes, but it's not for the glory of gold, amen? Amen. amen. Yep. <laughs> I worked for an employer one time. They were just very uncouth and unethical. And it was sad because on the front, they had a big sign that said, Glory to God. And all the people that worked there used to joke about how it ought to say, Glory to gold. Amen. Yep. That's a shame. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. That's why even guys who like to play act like they're serving the Lord, but they're really doing it because they want the tax breaks and they want the, their name and lights and, and all that. They will come to a church unless that church will give them that. Yeah. So churches have gotten to where they'll take gifts of sizable amounts and make sure one way or another, everybody knows where it came from. Yep. So they get the glory. Yep. Well, I hope they enjoyed that because that's all the reward they're going to get. Amen. Amen. Yep. Grace. When someone's really saved, grace produces works. Amen. But it's a lot of times you won't even know. That's why you better be careful judging everybody around you and saying, well, I've never seen so-and-so doing anything. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know what they're doing when, you're, when they're not here. Right. You don't know what they've done for people throughout the week. Amen. I had somebody complain one time, a long time ago, not any time recently. I had somebody complain some time ago. I just don't know what you're doing all the time. I said, well, I could... You know, let you live with me for a couple of weeks and you can see. Amen. <laughs> and most of the time, you're going to be bored to death yeah. <laughs> with the mm -hmm. things that any real pastor studying and preparing and, and then uh, all the things that go along. You don't know what some preachers you know because you see them on the golf course all the time, granted. Mm -hmm. But there are some preachers, just because you don't see us, don't think that we're just sitting around playing video games or watching <laughs> movies or, you know, whatever. 
and don't judge each other. This is about you judging yourself. Oh, me. Amen? Amen. Titus 2. I'm going to close up here. Titus 2. Getting ready to close up. <laughs> Got to be Just careful. I say that and everybody thinks I'm lying. Just one more thing. Excuse me, just one more thing. <laughs> yep. Titus 2, beginning verse 11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Amen. I love that verse. Amen. Pick up verse 12 and read with me. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Do you see that? That's how you're supposed to live now. And I think one of the reasons you see this next verse uh, right where it's at is because this is a great motivator for living that way. Read verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. If you're consumed with Jesus and you're consumed with just wanting to be with Jesus, can't wait to see Jesus, looking forward to the rapture, then in the meantime, you're going to be busy doing what Jesus told you to do and wanting people to know the only reason you're doing it is because of Jesus. Amen. I tell people all the time, you know, I'll get, you know, people say, look at all these messages online, this and that. I say, listen, I'm just doing this because Jesus told me to. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said, occupy till I come. If it was up to Greg Miller, I, would, I wouldn't be playing video games because I'm terrible. <laughs> but I would be watching a lot more movies and going out and traveling and doing whatever. But I don't because I want to occupy till He comes. And I want to bring glory to Him. Amen. And I want to please Him and not self. Read verses 14 15. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. You know, we, we emphasize you do not earn your salvation. Works don't help to save you. But once you're saved, you should be busy. Amen. You should be working. You should be doing something for the Lord. That includes the little things you do as well. As a husband, as a father, as a wife, as a daughter, as a son, all those things. As an employee. You should be the hardest working employee, the most ethical employee in that organization. Amen. And anytime anybody asks you about it, you say, I'm just doing what Jesus told me to do. Amen. If it's up to me, I'd be, you know, I'd be a Democrat. I'd be on welfare. I'd be getting my $500 of free income. You know? Amen. But, yeah. but Jesus hasn't call, called us to be freeloaders. Nope. And He hasn't called us to be socialists. Right. He has called on us to work. Yeah. And bring glory to the Lord when we do it. Amen. Ain't that awesome? Look at it. It ends verse 14. Purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. It ought to bother people that you want to work so much. You know, they'll call you crazy, John. You're nuts. Amen. Thank you. Crazy goofball. Always working. Always doing something for the Lord. Always giving out tracks. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You goofball. You crazy nut. Amen. Amen. You're a peculiar dude. Definitely. And shame, and shame on the devil. I, I, I love anytime somebody says, you know, you're a weirdo. You know, and I know for sure that it's not just my face they're talking about. <laughs> that they think it's peculiar. That you, they think it's peculiar you would come to church instead of sleeping in. They think it's peculiar that you would give a portion of your income to help make sure we can pay the bills and do the work of the ministry. They think it's pe pe peculiar that you listen to church music even when you're not in church. They think it's peculiar you want to talk about God outside of church. And on and on it goes. That's the way it ought to be. We should be a very peculiar people to the unsaved world. And there's no small deed. I mentioned that earlier, but no small deed. You do no small deed. You do good in Jesus' name and you will be rewarded. You do the smallest thing. And don't wait, you know, your flag to get your attention. You just do something. We thought for a while that somebody was cutting our grass here. 
and just being a good Christian, <laughs> we just try to think, you know, who, you think Dan's doing that? And we, so we left Dan, and Dan's like, I have no idea. <laughs> and I know he's not a liar, so I said, well, it ain't Dan. I mean, like, well, anybody else got a lawnmower? <laughs> Well, he comes to church here, and we knew, we asked, you know, we mentioned it to Steve and Charlie, we knew it wasn't them. Sadly, it turned out that it wasn't somebody doing a good deed. <laughs> somebody was cutting our grass, and they sent us a bill, and we hadn't told them to come and cut our grass. Amen. And I don't go investigating, I just, I ask around, if no one knows up to us, I say, well, the Lord knows, amen. Amen. Great is thy reward. Amen. Amen. And man, can you imagine how different the, the, the churches would be, let alone the world, if people would just do that. Amen. Random acts of kindness, they used to call it. Amen. Random acts of kindness. Just do something just because you know you ought to do it. And to try to get to a gas station and a cop pulled over. And he rolled down the window. He says, what the blank are you doing in this neighborhood? And I said, my car broke down. He says, well, get in. And I jumped in there, and I should say, uh, he said, what the hell? Yeah. Not something, you know, and oh, I say that, you'll, you'll see why I said that, just say. So I got in the car, and we started to drive off, and he apologized. He said, oh, I'm sorry I come off a little rough, but I, you, you don't belong in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I said, what makes you say that? He says, because you're fully clothed. <laughs> and um, long story short, it was the worst crime neighborhood in uh, oh. Broward County Whoa. where I broke down. Which is the worst in Florida. Now, yeah. which is the worst in Florida, that's right. And when he was taking me to a safer place where I could call and have somebody come and get my car, um, I said, that's the first time a cop ever picked me up and gave me a ride like that. He says, I didn't have to. I said, I know, I really appreciate it. He goes, well, you can thank Jesus. Aww. He cool. said, because I looked, at, I looked at you out there, I thought, if I don't pick him up, he's a dead man. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, great is his reward. Uh, yep. yep. And it can be anything. You see someone in need, and you provide it in the name of Jesus. Give him thanks to God and the Father by him. Give him thanks to God and the Father by Him. There's that Thanksgiving thing again. <laughs> Being thankful. We've repeatedly seen that in Paul's epistles and here. And this is where we're going to close. One more thing. <laughs> First Chronicles. And I wanted to do this because some people, I'm not pointing finger at anybody, but some people skip First and Second Chronicles. And there's some really good stuff in there. There is. Diamond mines. And in First Corinthians 16... First Chronicles. First Chronicles. So yeah, I've, I've referenced this in my teaching so few times I can't even say it. First Chronicles chapter 16. It's a little story. We're going to highlight it. We're not going to read the whole thing. But the, uh, how many of you know what the Ark of the Covenant is? Mm -hmm. So you've seen uh, uh, Indiana Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Hopefully you've read it in the Bible. Minus the mercy seat, of course. The ark had been taken by the Philistines. Now listen, everybody look up here. The Bible is real. Do you know that? Yes. And if you read what it says, you're like, ooh, this is real. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Philistines took the ark of the covenant. You know what God did? Gave them a really bad case of hemorrhoids. Yes. That's right. Amen. Don't get mad at me. God did it. And you know what they did? They realized it was the ark of the covenant. And so they sent the ark back, and one of the things they thought would appease God was they made... David was so thrilled about it that he got the ark and started heading back. But he didn't follow God's word. They didn't use the staves Amen. to carry it. That's they right. just threw it on a cart, and David got... Uh, was it Uzi? Uzzah. Uzzah. Killed. Mm -hmm. Because he saw the thing falling off, and he grabbed it. And people say, well, that's terrible. God would kill him. No, that, just pretend that thing is, is radioactive or electrical, we'll say. <laughs> it's like the ark was, uh, was hot electrically. And if you touch it, you die. The Bible tells you that over and over in the Old Testament.
Testament, if they'd read the Old Testament, they'd know don't touch that ark. And they'd known you're supposed to put staves and carry it. They didn't. And the priests were to carry it, not. And yes, it's supposed to be the Levites carried it. And so on three strikes, you're out. So it sat for a while. Well, then David read the Bible and said, oh, this time we'll do it right. <laughs> and so verse 1 says, So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the what? Name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Now jump down to verse 7. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brother. You see that? Mm -hmm. David Amen. followed the word of God after this disastrous failure. He praised the Lord and did it in the name of the Lord. And it resulted in his thanksgiving. Just, just like we read in Colossians 3. And it resulted in this first psalm. And we don't have time to read through the whole thing, but when you go home today, read 1 Chronicles 16 and read David's first psalm. And it's all about, like it says in verse 8, Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His what? Name. Amen. Make known his deeds among the people and so forth. You'll see it not once will David say, and remember to mention me. <laughs> Doesn't do it. Let's sing about it. 314 in him. Book. Three fourteen, I am thine, O Lord. If you're able, please stand. But listen, it, it appeared that most out of all of you paid attention. You heard what was said this morning, but I want to tell you this. It'll do you no good if you don't apply it and do it when you walk out those doors. We're going to sing this song, I Am Thine, O Lord. I want you to consciously... I'm challenging you to consciously speak to the Lord in your heart these words. Give yourself. I'm not talking about being saved. If you're saved, you're saved. But there's a lot of Christians that are saved but still holding on. Give yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, I am thine, O Lord. I am yours. I want to start doing the things I know I should be doing. I don't know what that is for you. But all of us got some area usually, that we're holding back or we're just not doing what we're supposed to do. I want you to consciously, I'm challenging you to consciously tell the Lord, Lord, I don't care what anybody else does. I don't care who else goes along. I am thine and I am going to do what I know I need to do. And I'm, going to, I'm going to do it in your name and for your glory. That's the challenge. I hope you get out the message today. Let's Amen. sing beginning verse 1, 3, 14. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and told thy love to me. Thy love to rise in the arms of faith and in words so strong to me.
before y'all run off, before we had a closing prayer, actually, we had some birthdays in February. Some of you celebrate Valentine's Day on February 4th, but we celebrate Martha's birthday. 14th. Wow. What did I say? 14th. Amen. 14th. I was thinking 14th. Anybody else for the February birthday? Raise your hand. Mark Easter. Mark Easter? Yes, his is today. Today. Wow. Happy birthday. birthday. Dave Reese tomorrow. EJ's is birthday. EJ. Tell him we had a cupcake on his behalf. He can take one of them. Jamie? What day? 25th. 25th. All right. So we'll sing a collective birthday. Happy birthday to all of them. Johnny? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for everyone able to make it out. We pray again for those who weren't able to be with us. Your blessing upon them. Traveling mercies as we head home. Bless our time of fellowship that remains. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Bless each one of these who have this uh, birthday month. Uh, Lord, that next year we'll celebrate in heaven. Yes. We thank you for all these folks, and uh, we just pray your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 See the front thingy. Ah, there you go. Oh, happy of service, Byron. Glad you can join us and that you're willing to double dip on some days. Alright, well, we're gonna go back in and I'm gonna stop the camera. So, farewell, onliners. Let's, hey, you want to say hi to Jenny? Hello. Hello. We have cupcakes. Oh, cupcakes. All Looks right. so pretty. Yay. Oh, you guys want to see the cupcakes? Of course you do. 
you can see the downstairs. I don't know if the Wi-Fi will stop. Hopefully it'll keep working down here. Murphy's Law will be that it'll work fine right now. Well, it doesn't during service, you know. Oh, we have our doors marked. Over here we have a lovely, lovely picture. To remind us of her and all that awesomeness. She and keep you. And I don't know why there aren't more people getting cupcakes down here. Guess you and I are the crazy ones. Uh, it is fascinating. There's still five of you watching. Oh, hi, Dre. Want to say hi to the camera? Oh, we actually still have colors. five people watching. <laughs> Many excellent colors, huh? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, what do we orange have? Orange and red? Yes, orange and red. Or... Or is that actually pink? It kind of looks pink on this screen. Yeah, it It's probably pink. pink. Sadness. Hmm. But it kind of looks like orange, too. Alright, blue or dark purple? Or is that dark blue? I'll yeah. get this one. So, Jenny, no movie this afternoon. All right, well, let me turn off the stream. All right, Just farewell, onliners. I'm going to eat this cupcake, so I probably can't really talk while I eat cupcakes. So, talk to you later. Thanks for joining us. Hold on. Johnny, want to wave bye? Andre, want to wave bye? You're still back there. Bye, onliners. See you guys.